Hello and welcome back to another video in our SQL Server installation process. This is going to be video number two, uh, just in case video number one for the most part, part one is required. Um, maybe you just don't have SQL Server Management installed. I mean, there might be a situation where going to part two is all you need, but pretty odd. Generally, one and two are kind of needed to go back to back in that order. And to be honest, once we're done, with this video itself, we will have a SQL Server instance, which was completed in the last one. We'll have also installed SQL Server Management Studios as a byproduct of this installation. We actually also get something called ADS, Azure Data Studio, but we'll be focusing on SSMS. This is the tool that we can use to connect to our SQL Server instance. And this is actually the tool that you'll be using in other classes, let's say when you want to connecting to your, you know, tabular models, when you want to connect to your Azure SQL database, your managed instance, SQL, SSMS gives us those capabilities. So we're going to get SQL Server Management Studios installed. We're going to then launch it, get connected to our new SQL Server instance so you can see what that process looks like. And we're going to see, since it's a brand new, we didn't do anything, we just installed a blank brand new SQL Server instance there are naturally are no databases that have been added to our database engine. So there's nothing there to query. There's no information. There's no data. So what we're going to do is we're just going to download one of the sample AdventureWorks databases. So I'll show you where you can go for that. Um, quite often, as part of our classes, we will provide those databases for you. Um, you may already have them, so obviously you wouldn't need them, but they are part of the classes that will be leveraging them. So we made that a little bit easy. Here, I'm just going to pick one of the AdventureWorks databases. We'll download it, and I'll show you how to restore it. And it's there going to be available for you now to query it. So that is what we're going to be doing here in this video. Installing SQL Server Management Studios, connecting to our instance of SQL Server, and backing up a SQL database. All right. So let's dive in. I'm going to just going to move out of the PowerPoint here. What we're going to do is, uh, if you remember in the previous video, we basically have those SQL Server installation files available to us. Now, you can just do a Google search and look up like SQL Server Management Studios, and it's going to take you to the exact same place that this is going to be doing. But I just wanted to show you because maybe you're doing this in one go and you still have this up. Remember, I went, this is where it installed the install items. There's this little setup. You can launch this once again, which is what we went through. We, right? we, this time, instead of going into installation and using new SQL Server instance, you'll notice install SQL Server Management Studios is right there. So what we can do is if we click on this, it actually just brings you right up to the actual browser in question. It brings us to the actual site on the Microsoft documentation for downloading SQL Server Management Studios. And there's a ton on here. You can read it, right? It's an integrated environment that lets you basically manage your structure of SQL Server, SQL databases, a bunch of different stuff, right? This is what we need so we can query our data, write the data, modify databases, create them. Whether it's on-prem, I like this little last line, right? Manage your databases and data warehouses wherever they are. Local, which is what we installed, or on the cloud, which we do do in some of our classes. So right here, you can see free download SQL Server Management Studios. This always gets updated with whatever the newest version is. We're going to download the newest GA version, which is 18.12.1. There is a preview, a beta, if you'd like, for SSMS 19. We won't be going through that here, but if you would like to, go right ahead. An interesting item here, which is kind of neat, is right here under important, it says, starting with a couple versions back from the one we're about to do, Azure Data Studio now has been automatically installed as part of this install process. So even though we're installing, you know, we're focusing on SSMS, we're actually going to get both SSMS and ADS. ADS serves that same purpose, right? It does allow us to basically connect to this, but it has more of a focus on our Azure products, right? Azure SQL database, you can do stuff actually with um, like Azure storage accounts. Um, but once again, our focus, SSMS. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on this little item here, get this downloaded. It's not the biggest of files, so just take a moment. As you can see, just doing that down there below. And what we'll do is we will just go ahead and launch this installer. So it's there going to be there in a second. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. I'm also going to close out of that browser. Give that a moment. Once again, if you want to change the location where this is installed, I am going to leave it here just at the uh, default, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit install. 
So this is literally just going to move through this process. There's really nothing special. It's a very simple application that is really just a user interface, right? You get to add things. This is just basically what we use as the vehicle to connect to, manage, and query SQL databases, right? We can do on-prem or in the cloud. So as you can see, it's moving through this process rather quickly. Uh, it looked like it was installing like a shell version of a Visual Studios item there, but we'll be doing a, that install later on. Um, and so we'll let this go. So what I'm going to do is just as before, I'm going to sneak away while this is moving through its motions, and I'll be right back. And we are done. So SSMS, and if you notice, Azure Data Studio and all these other components were installed. So this now is there. So once again, right, if we go and uh, I'm going to bring up my taskbar once again, so we can kind of see this together. If we look for SS, actually, let me do this here. SSMS, there it is, SQL Server Management Studios. And if we go ahead and select it, we'll open this up for the very first time. Go ahead and do that here real quick. Now this has opened up on my other screen. Let me bring it over here to the main screen. And we should see it present just like this, right? We're not going to go too in depth, but this is where you can choose. Do you want to connect to your database engine? Do you want to connect to analysis services? As of right now, we do have a tabular mode analysis service instance installed. It's ready to go. Reporting services, we can go through that as well, where we can look at those databases. Now, there's more that goes into the process of a reporting services server. If you remember, that's actually one of the options uh, right here. So that'll be happening in a later module. Uh, but what we're interested in is just connecting to the database engine. Now you can see by default, what is populated here is says, what do you want to connect to? What's your server name? We used a default instance. So it's using the name of my computer. My computer happens to be called Quintana one. Um, technically, if you were to go here and do MS SQL server, right? That was the default one. You could actually do local or even local host. Any of these will actually work. And actually you can put a period. These all indicate a local default instance. So any of these will work. So you can see, I'm just gonna put the period. Now, if you hit the button, if in the installation process, you didn't follow directly along with me and you decided to give it a named instance, you called it something specific, then you need to put that name in here. And right, we chose the default Windows authentication and we added ourselves as admins. So you can see it's default Windows. You could set up SQL Server. You'd have to go through that process once you're in, but I'm going to put the period for a local host. Uh, it's already using me because I'm logged in. And if I hit connect, boom, we are now connected to our SQL Server instance. Now, there's really not much going on here, but we can still, since we are admins, we can add security. You technically can just right click and add a brand new database and you're manually going through the process, but we're really not going to do that here in this case, but this is it, success. Now we have a way to connect to our SQL Server instance. Well, let's go ahead and make it so that we actually have some sort of databases that we can use. These are just kind of local diagnostic configuration stuff. This is not what we would use for like you know, our classes. Let's go ahead and download our AdventureWorks database. So as you can see, I have a little browser here. Uh, once again, just Google. I just wrote literally download AdventureWorks sample database, lots of different ways. And on the Microsoft website, it lists out a bunch of different versions, 2019, 2017. Once again, this is just for the sake of this class. You don't need to go, if you want to install all these, you have to go right ahead. We generally stick to using the OLTP and the data warehouse. Um, but once again, in our actual classes, we will tell you which databases we use, and we generally provide that for you. If you already have, if we maybe let's say you take a class and we're like, oh yeah, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna do um, AdventureWorks 2019. We're gonna install the OLTP version, right? The online transaction transactional processing. That's what that stands for. Um, and you already have it, then you're good. You don't need to like do this again. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply click on this, right? And this is just going to go ahead and download. You can see it's a .bak file. So this is the file type that's used for backing up a database. Restoring is the actual term here. So this now sits in my downloads folder. If I go over here, you can see if we go over downloads, there's my BAK file. So what we're going to do is since you know we're still here we're inside of ssms if you right click this databases folder you'll see it says restore database now what i like to do here is it's saying okay which database do you want to restore and there's nothing in the drop down 
What we're going to do is we're going to hit device, and this basically provides us with the option of navigating and pointing to the folder in question, which contains the BAK files. What I like to do is I click this ellipsis, which as you're going to see, just brings us up and says, okay, we're looking in this location. What do you, you know, there's nothing here. There's not, go ahead and choose add. It goes to this default location. Um, I don't, let me see if it, yeah, it does let me expand it. Cool. There's the full file path. So you can see it's a very long file path. It's obviously not where we have it. If you want to, you can see there's ways that you can go through the process of like going to your desktop to go into your downloads and all that stuff. But what I like to do is I just like to keep everything in those default folders. So this location, I actually want to go ahead and put that downloaded BAK right there. So what I like to do is I just copy this file path right here. I leave it open and I open up a new folder, right? So we have that folder here. Here's my downloads. I'm going to open up a new directory and I'm just going to go right here in the file path and I'm going to paste in the location. So it's saying, you know, hey, this is down in the C drive. You need admin. So I'm going to just say continue so I can grant myself the access. And we are now in the location where SSMS is looking for a BAK file, which of course, as we know, is blank. But I'm just going to go ahead and drag it. So I move this BAK file over there. When I go back into SQL Server Management Studio, if I refresh this, there it is, our BAK server. And we can go ahead and select it and hit OK, which brings it into this add section. So basically, if you if you had multiple BAK files, you could move through the process and add multiple here, right? So you could make that a little more streamlined. But we're just going to do the one, make this quick. When you hit OK, it basically brings it in here and says, OK, this is the device. This is the database. If you wanted to change the name of the database, how it will display. So maybe you wanted to add OLTP to this or something like that. Um, I'm just going to leave mine as Adventurex 2019. That's how we do it for our classes. There's either the non DW, so the non data warehouse version, this one, and the data warehouse version, which we put a DW at the end. So for this one, just going to leave it as is hit. Okay. This isn't going to take long at all. You can see ready to go. And now there's actually a database here. And if you expand it and you explore, it's got a bunch of different tables, things that you can query, things that you can explore. These are the types of things we're going to be doing in our classes. So this is how you can back up a database into your SQL Server instance using SQL Server Management Studio. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you're able to move through that process. We've got a SQL Server instance. We've got SQL Server Management Studio and we restored one database. When you go to your classes, we'll let you know which databases you'll be needing if it requires it at all. But for those who are maybe interested in just diving into something like Intro to T-SQL, Advanced T-SQL, something like that, you're good to go. You really don't need anything else in this process. This is everything that's required to take those classes. In the modules that we'll be looking at moving forward, these are going to be additional components that are required for other classes. But for anything else, for instance, like sometimes in some of the modules, it's not required. I would describe it as optional. Introduction to Power BI, a very popular class, there's some small modules where we look at the idea of connecting to a SQL Server database. It's very brief, it's very simple. In that case, we do use Azure SQL Database, but if you did want to follow along, you're going to need SQL Server Management Studio. So, like I said, this is here. That's why we're going to label this accordingly. In that situation, that might be a reason why, because if you're going to just always connect to Azure SQL databases, then all you really need is SQL Server Management Studios. You didn't actually need to go through part one and install a SQL instance. Part one was about getting a local SQL Server installed on your machine with all of those services. So hopefully that makes sense. We've got two of these modules down. We're, we're ready to go as far as for working and querying in, with databases, either locally or in the cloud. So once again, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.